from our live stream. Now that being said, if you wanted to be able for power reasons to turn off the display in the evenings, uh, you could use an Apple TV, a Roku, um, you know, the list kind of goes on and on about what you could use to pump this content. Um, but the beauty here is we've essentially done live digital signage, we've got live streaming videos, we've got tweets, we've got um, our well, donation goals going on over here. Um, it's a really nice way to do some, some pretty nifty content that people can pick up anywhere on a mobile device or yet again, use for digital signage. So what'd you guys think? That was pretty cool. 24 seven live streaming for free using YouTube Live. All we did was set up an Intel Nook streaming box and started streaming to YouTube and now we can pick it up on any device, any computer, smart TVs, and you can literally litter the world with digital signage. You know, a lot of people pay for that already. So thought it was pretty cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into an opening of the box. So changing the format a little bit on our show, but I think it's totally worth it. Um, so we're gonna open the camera that I am using. I don't know if anyone notices this. It's Gen 2 1080p 60, looks super sharp because I turned off the autofocus and turned on manual focus so it doesn't change when I'm moving around a little tip I learned let's go ahead and take a look so um, Jim feel free to jump in here I've got Jim here as well um, we're opening hey, up the 12x USB thanks for being here my pleasure and you're Dude, using that's the what we're using for this webinar as well the same 12x camera awesome so we'll, we'll have you on on the display in a second here um, Looks like there's a couple questions about audio sync issues. Um, I'd love to hear more about that. Sometimes YouTube, in my experience, try different bit rates. Uh, we're streaming at 1080p uh, 30. And uh, you can see here, we're opening up the camera. Um, you can see that we have USB cable, batteries for the remote, power supply, all the standard stuff. And uh, this is actually the white model, which is my personal favorite. Um, and we're streaming in 1080p 60 with this baby. It's just USB 3.0 directly to my computer. I'm not doing anything fancy with HDSDI or HDMI. And um, just uh, just really, really like this camera. I like the white. Let's, uh, let's end this, go back to our, our next layout here. So we'll turn this video off. And I'd uh, love to know what you guys think about this new layout. So trying to make it a little bit more engaging, throw some more content in there that we have from the past. Now let's talk about our community donations. So today we are donating, uh, basically the way this works, and I have a slide here to explain it, is basically we are donating um, to charity every single show. So $20 every live show just to kick it off, then uh, $1 for every additional like. So you got, a lot of you guys I know have probably already liked this show, and you can only like it once the way we're doing this. So we're already at 17 viewers, so that's an extra $17 right there. So the highest amount of viewers we get, we add that to the donation as well, plus all the likes and subscribes we got for the week. Last week we did $42. If we hit $50, which I think we will today, honestly, um, then we will actually uh, match the donation to up to four different charities. We've already donated over $10,000, and you can see a full log of it at charity.ptzoptics.com. Next week we're actually higher uh, someone to help the, the, the children in need with live streaming video content creation to get that uh, project out there. So we'll be interviewing them every week as well. Just really quickly updates from our charity that we're supporting. Also wanted to mention down here is the Twitter feed, live Twitter feed. All you got to do is tweet hashtag PTZ Optics and you will show up here. We're using vMix Social for that. It's really, really cool. Um, so all of that has been explained. Last thing I wanted to do was go over our calendar. So last week we interviewed the CEO of DeCast. Um, today we're talking about the Matrox LCS with Jim Basque. And then next week we're talking with churchstreaming.tv, a uh, great company, and that's the day before, or that's the week before WFX, which is the world's largest worship show. So that should be really cool. And then finally, the next week, we're meeting with Marty McFadden. He's got some ties with ESPN. He has his own live show called BTS Live. And um, we're going to be interviewing him. He's a really cool guy, really big industry professional. He's taking one of our cameras to Germany for the Leipzig Germany um, video summit out there. That's going to be kind of cool. So we're excited about that. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Let's jump into the show now. I have with me um, Jim Bask, and Jim, thank you for joining. My pleasure, Paul. How are you today? 
I'm doing really well, actually. Um, it's it's a it's a fun show. I, I've always really loved this show. It's kind of like the highlight of my my week here. So today we're talking about the Matrox LCS. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us a video guy's introduction in 60 seconds. A absolutely, I'd love to. I'm just looking down at my machine because I see some questions popping up here on YouTube as well. Uh, while I'm looking at that, let me tell you that Video Guys has been in business for more than 20 years, selling video editing and production equipment. We started selling linear editing systems, moved into nonlinear with Adobe Avid software, and now with live production stuff like the Matrox Monarch LCS that we want to show off today. Interesting. Um, huh. I wonder why the, I'm, well, they're telling us that the audio is out of sync, and I'm not sure why, because what I'm looking at looks good. Um, all out of sync by about two seconds. Hmm. Well, this is my, I'm going to have to do some testing later. we got to keep going on with the show. So tell us about the lecture capture market. Maybe if they just pretend that we're Godzilla, then <laughs> the audio sync won't be as bothersome. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you know what? It, it's interesting. I don't know what YouTube's doing. They're changing a lot of the things here, and um, uh, and I, it's hard for me to tell because we're like a minute and a half ahead of everybody. But I guess we just got to keep rolling. Twenty minute show in the post show. Maybe we can do some testing. Th that sounds like a good plan. So the lecture capture market, obviously higher higher education, um, schools, yeah. things like that. Um, tell us about that. Yeah. So basically, this is the third iteration of the Matrox Monarch series. They introduced the original Monarch HD to be able to give customers the capability to stream and record simultaneously. They followed up on that with the Monarch HDX to give a professional appliance that offered SDI input. Now the Monarch LCS is the evolution of that giving you two encoders either HDMI or SDI inputs. And it really works great for lecture markets, through schools, uh, corporate training, pretty much any place you can imagine where you would want to have two things going on at the screen at one time. Whether it is the lecturer with course materials behind him or two different people even presenting materials at the same time. Interesting. So tell us about those inputs and outputs. I've got one here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I got um, one here to hold up as well. Yeah. So the back of the unit does have one set of SDI inputs and two HDMI inputs. Now with that, you can use the combination of those inputs to hook up two sources going into it. So like I said, in the le lecture market, you can have one video source on the professor who's given the lecture himself, and the second source being whatever those course materials are. It could be a PowerPoint presentation being served from a laptop, uh, or it could be any other video source that's necessary to get those materials across cleanly and concisely. Okay, cool. So I just had you, you full screen there. I'm going to see if uh, that, that gives us any more insight into this audio delay, which I've never had before. Um, let's keep talking about it here. I have a uh, opening of the box that I wanted to show while we're, while we're chatting about all this. So awesome. um, tell me about the operation modes. I understand there's a lot of different ways to use this. And, um, and if, I'm, if I'm catching you off guard, I can fill you in. I'm reading it off the website. But there's apparently different operation modes. Yes, absolutely. So there's a picture in picture mode where you can take a PowerPoint slide with your course materials, blow that up over the entire screen, and then take me as the professor and put me in a picture in picture on any corner of that screen, wherever it would work best in those materials. A lot of times in a lecture, it's important to hear me talk about the materials but not, but more important to see the slide and to see the presentation. Another great feature is the side-by-side -side mode. Side-by-side -side mode lets me essentially do a split screen where as the professor, I could be on one half of the screen and I can toggle along through my presentation on the other half of the screen. The real beauty of what the LCS does is it doesn't constrict you to a 50 50 
split screen. You can crop in on the professor so you see my face, you're engaged with me as I'm giving the presentation, but still see as much of the real estate for the PowerPoint slides at the same time. And then the final mode is what they call a switcher mode, where like you did with me on the full screen video before, you can go full screen video to the slide, full screen video to me as the lecturer, and back and forth. Interesting. Sorry, I'm just so yes. Basically, what what the what everyone's saying here is that it is out of sync, and they've seen this happen kind of with no rhyme or reason with, when using YouTube Live. So it's something we're just gonna have to roll with. Um, so let's just keep going. Um, I wonder if it'll actually be on the recorded version. Um, so viewer defined layouts. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the viewer defined layouts? Yeah, the viewer defined layouts really is a cool thing. Uh, there are certain players that are being used and adopted throughout a lot of schools across the country, different universities. If you're using these players, you can, as the viewer, say, I want to see more of this PowerPoint slide. And you can choose your own layout that way. Interesting. So that makes sense. I was, I, that's what I thought it was. Thank you for clearing that up. But that's actually a really great uh, feature where you can just kind of choose what you want to see as a student or a viewer of the presentation. You, you know what it really is? I know um, just meeting people over the years, everybody learns a little bit differently. So to be able to give the viewers that flexibility is one of the reasons why I think schools are going to adopt this very quickly. So tell us a little bit about um, the RT, the, M oh, the MSRP of this product. So the MSRP of this product is twenty four ninety five, dollars mm -hmm. which is a definitely is, you know, a step up from the Monarch HDX, which had a $1495 MSRP, $1995. Don't quote me on that. I don't have that in front of me. Um, but the beauty of the uh, Monarch LCS, like all the Matrox products, is they do have an academic discount. So with a $24.95 MSRP, it's a $23.70 to schools or government agencies, which is really the, the target market for this product. So everybody's looking at that discount available to them almost off the bat. Interesting. That's really good to know. Um, I mean, what's really cool about this product, too, is the way that we plan on taking it to market and getting it adapted into the school. We have a great demo program available where we can actually get a demo unit to your school or university and put it in your hands, let you try it, put it in your classroom and decide whether it's going to be right for your application we can use that academic discount to get you one or two units to use in your classroom and another classroom in the school. You can eventually roll that out to the entire department and then ultimately to the entire school or university. And we can work with you every step of the way. And we also have a huge network of dealers across the country that are available locally if you need that extra level of IT support and tech support. Wow, that that this this product is really starting to, to come to fruition with me here. And just uh, sorry, I was doing so much stuff. What was the discount for um, for schools and, and government? So the t MSRP is twenty four ninety five. Yep. Schools and government is twenty three seventy. Nice, a little little extra there. So tell me about the remote management. That's basically how you use this thing, right? Because you put it on the network. You know, there's no buttons or anything on it. You really manage it all over the network, right? Yes, absolutely. It has standard protocols to work with whatever remote management or CMS software you're using in the school now. Oh, interesting. Um, I'm going to show their website really quickly um, to uh, to kind of just show where it is. And um, we'll show that off. And uh, so the remote management's really cool. Um, it's right here. So if you go to the matrox.com and then I had to go from matrox.com, I had to come here 
And then there's a little slide right here, Lecture Capture, LCS, and this has all the details on it. So tell us about this Crestron control because that's a, you know, I, I'm not sure if a lot of, I think a lot of universities and government facilities, they use Crestron, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Crestron I know is the number one control protocol in corporate conference rooms and government industries and um, different lecture areas throughout government. I know for those reasons, it's being used in a lot of the larger universities and schools throughout the country and is really an industry standard. Matrox is controlled beautifully with Crestron. It has all the protocols necessary for that, but also has an open control interface that, you know, it can tie in with any software that's being used. That's awesome. So, so it's, what is the open protocol? Is it just like RS-232 or... Is there a control port on this thing? Let me see. It has, uh, honestly, oh, yeah, it has RS-232. <laughs> yep. It's got RS-232 right on there. I can see that. There so it's, a, it's yep. a network it RS-232, which is kind of cool. Um, we, you know, we have an, a Crestron programmer here, and that's the first thing she always asks about these things. So let's go to the next. The uh, first thing a lot of people ask. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so tell us about the future. So this product is not shipping yet. Is it shipping? Do you have it in stock? No, What's going on? No, it's shipping. It, 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 it's in our warehouse. Oh. We have demo units and full units available now. It's been shipping now for about three weeks. Awesome. So this product is shipping. Uh, so people are buying it right now. There it is. <laughs> wow. Well, I know I got one too. I wasn't sure if I got yeah. a, a new unit. Yeah, this, this is not a beta unit. This is a working unit from our inventory. And like I said, we do have them available. That's awesome. I know I spoke with Matrox earlier uh, when this product was first coming out, and uh, they tested it with the PTZ Optics cameras. They thought it was a slam dunk because if you look at the product, it's got an HDMI in, two yep. HDMI ins, it's got one SDI in, so it's really, really easy to go ahead and plug that right into your uh, PTZ Optics camera as your camera input, and then your laptop or whatever else for your content. Well, Paul, if I could talk about a new product that you have coming out shortly. Sure. The, the auto tracker uh -huh. with this device is a perfect match. Mm -hmm. If you have an auto tracker PTZ Optics camera at the front of the classroom, tracking your subject, you can crop that lecturer into a small part of the screen and have your materials as the larger part of your presentation, mm -hmm. absolutely seamlessly. I'm excited One of the about it. Reasons that a lot of lecture halls go with a wide screen capture on the professor is that they're worried about limiting the professor to standing in front of a podium and not being able to express his emotions while he's teaching the class. And I know you got a chance to test the auto tracker out, so I know you're a little extra excited. I just I shipped did. it to Tom Sinclair, so I think he's going to be playing with it. I'm hoping it's going to be shipping soon. One thing I do know will definitely be shipping in September, uh, in uh, October, which is Q4, very starting, is we're also going to have an audio controlled switcher. And the audio controlled switcher is only going to be like $200. And that allows you to switch presets automatically based on microphone inputs. And it's going to be because the auto tracker is looking at like seven, eight thousand dollars where this is going to be $250. So right. it with paired with this, you know, for less than 3000, you know, so we're going to talk about all that auto stuff, but we got to let's talk about it in the post show. We got to run the credits. I'll see you guys all soon. Hang around. Ask us your questions. Thanks for joining. Right here. Beautiful technology lovers. Hello, everybody. I messed that up. So what I'm going to do is go to my talk show here. Okay, so Jim's taking a little break. Thank you.